All right, we are back, Peanut Gallery. What are we talking about for Heckler from the Hard Camera? Yeah, so I'm going to test out this new series. I'm going to be going through the booking styles of certain bookers. Now, I thought about doing it on a promotional basis, but I feel like doing it on a booker basis might be more interesting because then I can talk about people who have gone through different wrestling promotions and have brought their styles to those different promotions. Okay. Now, of course, you know, we have um, the booking styles of Gato. Gato is very well known for his his booking styles throughout New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, there was actually a it was actually a very interesting um, tidbit about Gato's booking style that was done many years ago, um, where Gato would he still uses pen and paper, like he has a notebook of wrestlers that are still active today. And he is a very long-term style of booker. And um, it is said that he books wrestlers two years out. Jesus. So everything that you are seeing right now as a part of booking goes back to 2019. Now... Maybe the pandemic changed a few things, but we can talk about this and let's talk about the first or, or I guess one of the greatest um, rivalries of all time, Okada and Omega. Okay. And the reason I want to talk about this because I think this is a perfect example of long-term booking. Gato literally had this rivalry play out for two years. Mm-hmm. And... Despite the fact that there were gaps, so they weren't facing each other every single month throughout the entire rivalry, right? Right. But the rivalry was always there. And you can see it today with teams like um, with the United Empire, for example. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of long term booking being had in that. Right. Even though United Empire is only a year old there is still going to be that level of... Osprey Osprey was always supposed to be his own thing at some point. Right. Because he was just too good to be a lackey for somebody. Exactly. And and then you... So you got um, the... You got um, LIJ. You got uh, Bullet Club. Uh, Evil becoming a part of Bullet Club, that was planned years in advance. Hmm. And you're starting to see the fruits of that happen. Now, with Evil winning double gold actually brings me to another piece. And let's talk about how faces become heels within, within New Japan Pro Wrestling. So within New Japan Pro Wrestling, there is a heavy emphasis on teams, right? Yes. Factions. So the easiest way for a face to become a heel, as we have seen very recently, is for the one of the good guys to become a bad guy. Right. And the bad guy breaks off from the old team and becomes a member of the new team. And so in Japan, betraying your clan, your tribe, your team, is seen as the ultimate act of betrayal. Right. And so... Guess where we saw that? Show versus Yo, right? Right. Where Show betrayed Yo, and now this individual goes off on their own path. And then you also had, once again, Evil doing that big betrayal with Sonata. Uh, Naito. Oh, it was, it was Naito. Naito. Because Naito was double champion. That's and right. Evil won the um, New Japan Cup right after the. This was like literally right after they came back from the. Yes, pandemic. it was, and so um, actually, Evil becoming the champion and losing is actually another big part of Gato's booking style. Hmm. And I'll kind of explain that in the end because I think it kind of ties a lot of different things in. But um, let's talk a little bit about titles. So I want to talk about. Uh, Kenny Omega's United States Championship reign. So, Kenny Omega was the first ever IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. Yes. How many times do you think that Kenny Omega defended it before it kind of became like a legitimate, like, this is a big deal sort of title? I don't know. It was three times. 
he had he had three title defenses before it kind of almost became like a legendary status title. Hmm. In New Japan, the more prestigious the championship is, the, the less m- is defended. Nope, the more is defended, which huh. is weird. That is really weird. You think about something like the IWG, uh, not the IWGP, the um, Never Open Way Six Man Tag Team Champions. Yeah. yeah. You'll have something like that where someone will hold those titles for 100 or 150 days without a single defense. You know why? Because they're not as prestigious as some of the more important titles. Oh, I see what you're saying. They're more defended, but it doesn't mean that the title reigns are always necessarily longer. Exactly. I see. So that's why these titles... Now, the Never Open Weights have gone through their ups and downs. I think right now they are the literal strongest they have ever been. But they're not defended as much as... No, they're as, not. They're not, they're not I mean, defended part, part, as much part as... Of them, t- yeah. Two of the three of them went for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions yeah. like earlier today. Yeah, so the less important the championships are... Oh. The less impo- the less number of times they're defended. Oh, so the more important I didn't know that. the more important they are, the more they're defended. However, within New Japan, there's a set number of times in which they are defended. There's a set number of times. Yeah, they're only defended once every other month or so. Oh, just out of tradition. That's oh. just the way that's always been. I never knew that. And so when you have something like, uh. Kenny Omega's United States Heavyweight Champion, uh, yeah, U.S. Heavyweight Championship reign. After four or five times, it became legendary for him to have it because that was about a year at that point. Hmm. And so the other thing that happens too is that Gato really listens to what the fans have to say. So when I talk about that, I'm talking about something like um, AJ Styles is. Um, uh, first reign as IWGP Heavyweight Champion. When he was that champion, he was part of Bullet Club, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of interferences going on at that time, kind of like how you were complaining about that with Evil, right? Mm-hmm. And so he, and so Gato listens to what the fans are reacting to. And the fans really determine the direction that the team goes. It does not determine whether someone becomes a babyface or a heel like the WWE does. But they change the tactics based on what the fans are reacting to. Oh, in subtle ways. Oh, I see. So just because you may complain about evil having a lot of interference... What if that's selling out tickets? What if that's selling out stadiums? He doesn't care about that. He wants the people to come and see. But if Evil... So, for example, let's talk about Evil's first reign. When he lost last summer to Tetsuya Naito, where we thought that was too soon, right? Right. That was actually Gato listening to the fans and saying... And not taking Evil seriously. Right. The fans are not taking Evil seriously. Don't know why, but whatever. Well, again, he because, was because, just fans, looking, because fans are morons. Right. Well, no, he was. This is actually perfect because Gato listens to what the fans are doing and he encourages the wrestlers to be authentic. Interesting. And so, just so based on what the fans are doing, Gato does not want the fans to be manipulated by what the wrestlers do. He wants the wrestlers and the factions to manipulate themselves based on what the fans are saying. Hmm, interesting. And so I I believe that the initial plan in 2020 was to have Evil be a longer-term champion, but the fans were not reacting very well to evil being the double champion and they were trying to get people talking about a big title change because that was right after the pandemic exactly and but they wanted, it didn't and they, and they also and they also wanted to establish evil as a um heel main eventer and i think even after this it just didn't help because there was so much interference exactly and yes i'm still going to complain about it no matter what i don't necessarily 
fault Evil for it, nor do I fault Gato for it. Right. But the problem is, is that there's such a thing as too much interference. There is. And Evil, but, evil you, AJ Styles was already an established main eventer before this, before he became champion. So multiple interferences worked for him in that way. With Evil, they needed to... They, whoop, geez, man, I'm a mess today. They needed to make sure that he was established as somebody who can already beat people right. by himself before he had interference. AJ Styles could have beaten anybody at any time, no matter what. It just made it easier for him. Right. Evil, we never got that establishment. It was right. always interference. It was always interference, and that was a problem. All right. That's where they lost so, people. So um, the other thing I want to talk about, too, is we're going to kind of move forward here. But I want to talk about Hiroshi Tanahashi's reign as champion. He was the IWGP champion for a while. Was it Hiroshi Tanahashi? I it had? was Hiroshi Tanahashi, yes. It was. So, um, I'm trying to find the picture. There we go. So the point with this one is that Gato and, and just New Japan in general, they're not afraid to try something out with somebody. So a part of me feels like that evil was just a test. Yes. And he was a test that did not work out very well, which is fine, which was just perfectly okay. Um, but New Japan has such a variety in its roster because of the way that the roster is structured that allows for more people to become guinea pigs. Right. And I say this because they listen to what the fans are reacting to. And they also keep in mind the overarching story. So remember, everybody has a two-year story arc right. going along with everything that's happening right now. So think about it. Everything that's happening right now is probably in Gato's mind last year right? or the year before, which is crazy to say. But New Japan has always been focused on that very, very... Very long term, and that's why I think a lot of it works. It's like you need to follow the journey to get to the right destination, and that's the thing is that you have to follow the journey of the wrestler in order to understand where they're getting at. The and, I, and I think that's why there are a lot of people who still like that kind of booking because it is that old school way of doing things, right? And the last thing I want to talk about, too, which I think goes very well into kind of what's happening up up uh, upcoming with the G1 climax is I want to talk about the way in which they do their tournaments the G1 right so the the way in which they this is last year's G1 by the way but the the way in which they do all of their tournaments in general is not an elimination it's always red robin it is always a round robin and so, in my opinion, I feel like that this is a part of that long-term booking where they really build somebody up and they win this turn think, because they're facing everybody else. Right. I think I think no around matter what. Right. I think round robin really works for this kind of style of booking of wrestling because yeah, you have to win a certain amount of matches. You're building that person up. They really work yep. hard. Everybody faces everybody at some point in time, and I, I think it's a great way to do it. I've always loved round-robin tournaments, but the problem is people are so much like immediate now, immediate now. Maybe I want, I want to know who wins right now. I think it's part of the American culture. It's hard to really readjust to that. Um, G1 has always been at least pretty okay about making sure that it's not too mundane, but you know, you're going to have to wait three months before you know who's going to be that. They're starting in September, and I think the last one is usually in, like, December. Mm -hmm. So you literally will have to wait until then for um, the winner to happen. But you need to enjoy the journey. And yeah. once again, the how they do the tournaments is pretty much how I think they do their entire booking. Enjoy the journey. Yep. The destination will come, because and you, the, you won't be the, disappointed. Right. The destination, it's just a moment in time, but you have to appreciate the journey upon which these wrestlers are embarking upon because in some notebook somewhere, Gato has all of that r written down, <laughs> recorded, and it is going to work out very well. So. Right. 
my plan for this is to have a series. I'm not going to base it off of certain wrestling promotions, but I'm going to base it off of certain bookers. So I do plan on doing a Vince Russo. Oh, God. I do plan on doing a Bruce Pritchard. Jim Cornette. A Jim Cornette. And Eric Bischoff. Did Eric Bischoff book wrestling? Yeah, he booked WCW. Did he book or did he produce? He booked. The NWO, that was his making. That was his influence. Uh, he was influenced by another thing in Japan, but I'm not sure who was he the was actual. He was the producer. Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. Vince McMahon. And I'm going to split Vince McMahon up because there's multiple eras of Vince. Right. And Triple H. Yeah. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Yeah, he, he did. And Because he did primarily NXT. Uh, Hulk Hogan. For, you know, I mean, there's a ton of different examples. So let me know what your thoughts are on this. I call it the booking. Booking styles. This is booking styles Gato. What are your thoughts on it? Absolutely. So when we come oh, back. What are your thoughts? Um. I feel like sometimes, I mean, I, I like the booking style. I think sometimes, you know, it's it's a swing and a miss. And the problem is, is that it's so long term. I feel like you don't know if it's a miss until it's too late. Exactly. I can see where that can come into play. Right. But and for, I'm not, I'm not going to do this week by week by week, but maybe like a once a month thing if there's nothing else to talk about. Right. That sort of thing. But anyways, when we come back, wrestling lesson Tiger Height is going to I'm going talk, to talk about I'm going to talk about pa- I'm going to talk about pay-per-views that have changed pro wrestling companies and the industry forever so stay tuned for that. <laughs> 